So today we have this old 12 string acoustic guitar that my grandfather has had since the 1960s. Now this guitar definitely has seen better days, but considering he's had it all this time and I think he's its only owner, it's in a pretty fair condition and he brought it to me because he wants me to restore it, clean it, fix some broken parts. Now, before we start the restoration, I just want to take some specs on this. As for scale length, I'm going to be measuring from the 0 fret to the 12th fret. It's about 25. Yeah, I'd say this is about 25 and a half inch scale length. So, similar to a Fender, I think most Martins and other acoustic guitars have that scale length. Now this bridge is a floating bridge with one of these tail pieces, so it can be moved around. You can see where it originally was. So if I measure from here to where it is now, 25, yeah, it's probably about 25 and a half. So it's in a good position there. I don't know what it was doing up here. That would have been way off. Now these tuners, most of them are pretty hard to turn because they're so old and rusted. So I'm gonna be taking these off cleaning them up, trying to lubricate them, and get them to work better. Now this top, I'm assuming, like most acoustic guitars, is spruce. The rest of the body, I can't really tell, because I don't know too much about wood. But seeing how it's made in Japan, I wouldn't doubt it if it was some cheaper wood. You can see here, this is a damaged spot, where the wood is splitting apart, and he wants me to fix this. So I'm gonna try my best to do that. And you can see here that it's it's multi-ply. So this isn't a solid back. Now this neck here, I don't have a way to measure this, but I'll attempt to do it with the ruler to measure uh, the neck depth. So at the first fret, I'd say it's about, about an inch. 12th fret, well, maybe we shouldn't measure up there because that's where the heel is. But a little above the 12th fret, it gets more to like an inch and a quarter. I don't know, my measurements probably are way off. Now at the 0 fret, it's about 2 inches wide. And at the 12th fret, moves up to about 2 and a half ish Now you can see the, how the action is so high here. And that is because this neck is bowed inward a lot. And I wish I could fix that, but sadly this doesn't have an adjustable truss rod. What I discovered here is that it's one of those T-shaped truss rods that's solid and can't be adjusted. So I'm gonna have to play with the intonation at the bridge and get something to work. Now these strings, I do sort of believe these might be original strings. They sound decent. Like for their age, they work. But uh, sadly these have to go. Now let's take a closer look at this tailpiece down here. The strings are fed through here and they have ball end and this bridge is starting to fly all over the place now because there's no strings keeping it in place. So this bridge I'm assuming it's some sort of rosewood, probably real rosewood because back then rosewood was not an issue. No it doesn't really swivel and that hinge there so I'm going to unscrew this here and remove it from the body. The bridge and tailpiece have been removed. There's a ton of dirt under this. And you can sort of see how the original wood is colored. Like how it has aged darker. So now I'm going to move to the tuners up here and I'm going to try my best to safely remove these strings without poking a hole in my finger. Yeah, I'm starting to think these weren't the original strings because you see here how the string goes from thick to thin. Either that's what they did in the factory or someone replaced the strings and decided to wind it around the entire way. The way I string up guitars, I don't do that. I usually trim the string. But the 1960s was a different era, so maybe that's just how they did it back then. Now it's probably a good time to take a look at the nut and the bridge. This here, you know, it really does feel like real bone. That's what they used back then, I think. Like, it could possibly even be ivory, but I would hope not. Okay, now I'm gonna move on to the tuners back here. Very old, vintage style tuners. These very small screws. 
The screws are actually pretty shiny underneath. Decent condition. So I have honestly never done this before with the vintage style tuners, especially with open gear tuners, so this might take me a minute to figure out what I am doing. But I assume I should probably remove these first. I removed all the plastic bushings. There were missing two, but what can you do? And the tuners popped out. Now these are very rusty and difficult to turn. So I'm gonna try to clean these up, lubricate them, and hopefully get them working in better condition. As for the body, now that it has been skinned naked, I am going to try to fix this. First, I'm gonna start by vacuuming out the inside of the guitar. Then I'm gonna glue this and clamp it together. So here I have clamped these two parts together. I put some pieces of wood in there, just loaded it up with glue. So while the glue was drying, I went ahead and used some WD-40 on these to make them a lot smoother. And then I polished up the buttons, tried to remove as much rust as I could. It's still kind of rusty, but it definitely works a lot better than it did before. Like some of these buttons are really smooth. Now obviously you can't remove rust, but I polished this a little bit and you can see it's it's definitely a lot shinier than it was before. Also, in addition to cleaning up these, I reamed out the inside of the bushings with this circular file so that they fit better and will they won't cause any friction now. Okay, so I let the glue dry for 24 hours and the back is now closed up and fixed. Eh, it's not gonna be perfect, but it's definitely better than it was before. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean this all off to make this look as new as possible. And then after that, I'm gonna polish it down, make it pretty much look brand new. Look at that shine. Now that this has been all cleaned and polished, I can put it all back together and string it up.
And the guitar is finished. And I successfully brought this 60 year old 12 string guitar back to life. I cleaned up the guitar, fixed a hole in the back, conditioned the fretboard, lubricated the tuners, polished all the metal, and I strung this up with only six strings because the action is so high and it would be very difficult to play with 12. Also, these are electric guitar strings. I put a set of Ernie Ball regular slinkies because acoustic guitar strings are already hard enough to fret the notes and with action this high, it would be painful. So, I went for comfort over sound. But these strings are very good. I use them on all my guitars, electric guitars, but they work, they last a long time.